Here at the University of North Texas Speech and Hearing Center, we do research for um, clinical populations and we also serve them in the clinic to test hearing and do hearing evaluations and fit hearing instruments. Another part of mainly my job is to do research on this hearing technology to see whether or not it's beneficial to adults and children with hearing loss. Hi ladies, thanks so much for coming in today. I really appreciate you guys participating in the study. Thanks so much, just come on back and we'll get started. I have had hearing aids since I was four. I have a neural loss and I'm constantly frustrated by not being able to hear and communicate what I'm trying to say. It's hard for me to engage with my friends and be involved with my family. In school, it's hard for me to hear. So when my teacher asks me a question, I don't really know if she's talking to me or I really don't know what's going on around me. So it's really hard for me to keep up with the pack. Children with hearing loss have significant problems hearing in background noise, and most classrooms are very noisy places. And so these children have difficulty hearing because they have a damaged auditory system that we can't just repair, we can't just fix with amplification. So they're very impacted by that background noise, and they require a signal that's 10 to 20 dB louder than their peers to perform similarly on speech recognition tasks. So most recently, we've conducted a study on a new remote microphone technology known as Voice Priority I, works in Oticon hearing instruments when used with an FM system. These FM systems that we included in the study include a microphone worn by the primary talker, and typically they're used in a classroom, so that would be the teacher, and then the children wear a receiver on their hearing instrument where the signal from the transmitter can be sent directly to the child's ear through his or her hearing instrument. We were interested in evaluating the potential benefit of voice priority I and FM systems for children because it is a new and different technology because it adjusts the FM emphasis at the child's ear. And so it may provide different benefit than a traditional fixed gain FM system that picks one level or one level of FM emphasis to the listener versus voice priority I, which is adaptive in nature. So if it's a very noisy environment, it can provide more FM emphasis. If it's a less noisy environment, you would get less FM emphasis. And so what this does is really individualizes the FM emphasis for the child so that you know they're performing at their optimal level and wherever they're seated in the classroom, whether they have you know more localized noise around them or whether it's more diffuse or uniform in nature. Either way, the child would be receiving an appropriate signal-to-noise ratio. Now you're gonna to listen to that same story again, but this time there's gonna be background noise of several people talking at the same time. Now, okay. we found from the behavioral testing as well as the subjective measures that we included, the questionnaires for the parents and the children, that voice priority I provided significant benefit to the listeners and in many situations provided more benefit than the traditional fixed gain FM system. So overall, we found uh, not only behavioral uh, benefit measured in a classroom and in a laboratory, but also subjective benefit from using it in the real world. You want to be able to have the freedom to do what you want to do. Because if you've got a talent but you can't hear, that, that that's a really big hesitance and so you really can't go forward because you won't understand. So you don't want to hide that talent. You want to free it up. And I think that's why Oticon is so awesome because they've helped me do a little bit more of that. So, thank you. <laughs> if the viewers are interested in learning more about this work, it's going to be published in the 2013 Journal of Educational Audiology.